you don't know it's there, but it's there watching you every move. If you think about 43% of the cyber attacks, the small businesses. Today on the show, Sandra Eastock, she is the founder of Way to Protect, author of the inter and, and international bestseller, award-winning series, Happily Ever Cyber. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about ransomware. You guys probably seen what's happening in Las Vegas. I wanted to bring her in. She is a keynote speaker. She's a corporate trainer. She's been in the cybersecurity data uh, world for like 20 years. So I'm excited to have her on here so we can talk about ransomware, how it affects your business. Sandra, welcome back. Thank you so much, Bert. And so excited to be part of your show and to share you know, what's happening in the world. Definitely ransomware because we have seen it in the news all over and share a moment where we can be more connected with our technology. So let's do this. Let's do it. All right. So what's interesting about what's happening there in Las Vegas is that I believe Caesars paid like $15 million. Mm -hmm. MGM has paid nothing from mm -hmm. the information that I've seen. They have gotten the FBI involved, but their website is down going on 90 hours. It's been down mm -hmm. for several days. Give me your thoughts on this. Did Caesar do the right thing by paying? Is MGM doing the right thing by not paying? What's your take on this? You know, it, it's a hard call. And at the end, it's a business decision. Now, if you think about what the FBI recommends is don't pay the ransom. And don't pay the ransom because the more we pay the ransom, the more it becomes a business or it continues to be a business. And it's one of the most profitable businesses today, you know, the, the legal side of cybersecurity, cybercrime, and, and uh, not paying that ransom. Obviously, we can see the consequences of, of, you know, the chaos and more about, you know, whether you pay or not. What I will say is, are you prepared for that? Because sometimes we don't think it can happen to us. And this cyber attack show us that anyone is vulnerable. I mean, a corporation that has a revenue of billions of dollars and they have a gigantic budget, they have probably different teams and, and a lot of people that it's working on their IT and cybersecurity and still we get to see this happening. And, and I think this is a wake up call for many whether you are a business, whether you are an individual or you are a corporation that, you know, the threat is real. Absolutely. And what's interesting about this, um, this is probably some very sophisticated hackers who are going for the big money. But you and I have talked about this in the past where, you know, small businesses for a lot of these hackers are the what do they call it? The, uh, the, uh, the, the daily bread, the daily meal, because they can, they can hit a, a bunch of smaller businesses yeah. and hold them up for a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars $10,000, as opposed to, to your point, you going after MGM and Caesars, they do have a team in place. So this isn't something that somebody just did overnight. This is something that had to be planned. They were constantly attacking the network, trying to find that weakness but you go to a small business and they have barely no cybersecurity. Uh, we hear about uh, a business that was hacked because somebody came in through the thermostat. It was a digital thermostat that was online. What do they call it? The Internet of Things. Yep. Crawled through there, shut down that business and held it for ransom, I think, for only like, again, five or ten thousand dollars. So this is just an extreme example and I think the challenge is, and I want your thoughts on this, is that a lot of small businesses, and when I say small business, yes, mom and pop, but also like a hundred person business that's doing millions yeah. of dollars, mm -hmm. they're thinking, this has nothing to do with me. This will mm -hmm. never happen to me because I'm so yeah. small or because I have security or because yeah. of whatever's in their mind. But that's not true. That's a myth, right? Absolutely. You're so right. And I love that you bring that because we don't think that we can be a target until it happens to us. And what I want is you not to be there 
you know, whether you are a business or you're an individual, you know, most, most of cyber attacks, and you just said it, it's 43% of the cyber attacks happen to small businesses. I mean, that's, think about the big scheme of, and this is based on the latest report from Verizon. And if you think about 43% of the cyber attacks, the small businesses, I'm, I'm including in their, you know, financial institutions, healthcare, government, and all the different industries. And still small businesses are that big of a target for the reasons you just mentioned. And whether is we don't believe it can happen or we don't have the resources, the, the, the challenge is that if you're not prepared and it happens to you, in within six months, this study that has been done is that most of the businesses will be closed because they don't have the, the capacity. Right now, how much do you think MGM is losing every single day without access to their systems, without access to you know, do their normal. I mean, it's not just the MGM, it's the series of hotels that they own. And it's over a million dollar a day. Like a small business doesn't have the capacity to lose every day that much money. And it won't be a, a million a day, but whatever it is that you, right. you know, your revenue is. And what is the possibility of you to recover from that attack because we've seen it it's been days and it's still you know there are there are some portions of their system that might be working that's what we see in the news but we don't know i mean i have been in it and cybersecurity, and i know how you know how intensive the work it is and it won't end when those systems are restored because when you have people that already infiltrated your network you have to be sure that they are out. Yes, you have to guarantee that they are not going to attack you in a few months. Right. Well, and it, and it almost reminds you or gives you that same feeling of dread. Like when you yeah. come home and you realize somebody's been in your house mm -hmm. and, and they've stolen some things. And yeah. even though now you're going to change the logs, you're going to put up security, there is still that uneasiness. Course. At least with your house, there are some physicalities to it. You can see, okay, I'm putting up cameras. I got better locks. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some things. But in cybersecurity, somebody can plant a virus or a bug or a code, and it can sit there dormant mm -hmm. for months, for years, until they come back and say, "Hey, I want, I want back in" or something. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. And and that is the, the biggest challenge because when you have something undetected in your network, it's like, like you know, sleeping with the enemy. <laughs> it's like you don't know it's there, but it's there watching you every move. I mean, imagine that, having that, you know, your space, your personal space, your bed, and that something is in there. And something is watching you. Something is tracking your behavior. Is looking, you know, what is that you care about? What is that you do every day? And where and how can I do the biggest damage? And I think that's when, you know, it's so important not only to have technical solutions, but in this case, for, for both the CSER and the MGM, the way that the attack happened using social engineering, and it's being talk about the human factor and and I want to touch on that Bert, because it's so important we don't think it can happen to us until it happens and we don't think that we can be that you know that reason that a, cor a corporation can be in the state that this company is Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, I want I do want to talk about that and I want to bring up something that uh, that you coined. This is I think your contribution to the American lexicon or maybe the global lexicon and that's cyber monsters, because there's all yes. types of cyber monsters. You know, what yeah. a lot of people, you know, we hear a lot about um, child trafficking or, or predators, cyber monsters out there that are targeting children. And yes, there's a lot being done for that. But there's also people who target identities, people like who are targeting this ransomware stuff who make their living that way. There are a lot of cyber monsters out there. 
and things are moving so fast they can't keep up with a lot of these. So give me your thoughts on this. How can we start, let, let's say for a small business of, of two to maybe uh, 50 people, how do they prepare? How wh What should they be doing now to prepare themselves against some of these cyber monsters? Absolutely. I, I thank you because that that is exactly taking the proactive approach, thinking like you just said, okay, it happened to this company. What if it happens to me? Am I ready? And asking yourself that question. Because when you ask, like it's you ask yourself that question and you really sit on the question, you will realize, you know, have you, you know, how how is you or your organization managing passwords? Who has access to the most important data in your company? Do you know? Like for employees, like if you have a, uh, a small business, but you have employees or you have third parties or you have vendors or you have contractors, you know, how do you de deactivate them when they no longer work with you? Or are, do they remain active? Like there are a series of questions that you can ask yourself and honestly answer that. And realize, you know, what am I prioritizing cybersecurity? Is it really being in my in my strategy? Is it really being part of how I care for my customer data? How I care for for my finances? Because at the end of the day, you know, if if you don't protect that money, it can go away easily in a in a in a hack. No, so putting cybersecurity. And I, it, you could do a risk assessment. You could do, you know, there are tons of resources available, you know, whether it's in the SBA, like if you're a small business, there is a ton of resources that you can find them. I, I start working with, you know, that in mind. Now, I, there is a topic, Bert, that before, you know, what technology, what things that we implement, what I will say is, do ask this question do you really know and care enough to protect all your assets and i know the answer of course i want to protect my assets i want to protect but i want to ask you this question let's let's think about the phone right you're a small business right how are you using your phone are you transacting with that phone are you having customer data on that phone? Are you saving your, you know, you have your bank account, you have all the information that access your company CRM or, or your company information through that phone? If the, any of those answers is a yes, then my next question is, how are you protecting it? You know, how strong is your password? How frequently do you update that phone? How frequently the people you work with take care of protecting the information? You know, how often do you train yourself and train others about the basics of cybersecurity, the basic of cyber safety? And how often do you really incorporate those practices? So as a small business, that's where I would start. You know, asking myself that question and being honest and about where I am. And it's not about guilt or blame or nothing. It's more about just realize where you are and take an action towards making it safer for you, for your company, for your employees, for your customers. Right. Well, and, and I love that. It's a, it's a very simple starting point. It's becoming aware. It's the same question you ask if you're if you're trying to become better at customer service, how can we improve our customer service? Where are we good at? Where are we weak at? And the same thing with cybersecurity. How are we managing our passwords? You know, who has access? Do, you know, do we have different levels of accessibility? Because again, in some small businesses, uh, I have a, a client that's a, a dealership, and it's a fairly large dealership. It, it's it's they have. I want to say something like a hundred different dealerships under their umbrella. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens this conversation, we were talking about uh, uh, accessibility 
And it comes to find out that most of his employees have access to 80% of his mm. data. Yep. And yep. we weren't even talking about cybersecurity. We were talking about marketing and, and, and some of the things that you have to be aware of. And, and again, back to customer data, you have to, you have to secure that. And, yep. and so I was shocked. This is a large business. It does over a billion dollars in sales. Like I said, they have over a hundred dealerships and their security was lax, immensely yep. lax for somebody that big who's dealing with not only just credit cards, but bank info, large amounts of money, wire trans co transfers coming in and out. But that's just a normal thing. I think to your point, most of us don't think about cybersecurity. Most of us just think, okay, I have a password. Um, I have a, a secured network, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. And that's it. What more do I need to do? Oh, oh, I back everything up every day, right? That, that's the other thing, because a lot of people don't even do that. Yeah. So I have a password. I have a secure network. I back up my data files. I'm good to go. But that's the thing. That's the same thing that MGM and Caesars are saying. And exactly. And in that case, I mean, going back to that, you know, to that specific type of attack, if you think about how easy it is for someone, for a cyber monster, to go to LinkedIn or to go to any social media and to find out who are your employees. You know, to go to your website and find out who are your customers, to go and find out who do you do business with. And now go to find more information about your company. In this case, you know, they call the help desk and say, hey, I need to reset my password. And, you know, social engineering is such a, an incredible skill set. I mean, these people are deceivers by nature so they they you know they are trained for you know to to trigger to like push the buttons you remember that um red button you know pushing my button yes. that you know that's what they do and they are going to play the emotions and they're going to play the victim they are going to rush you they are going to you know they are going to do all these different things for you to take an action whether it's you as a person, whether it's you as your own business, whether it's you as your employees or your businesses, if we are not prepared to handle that, if we're not aware, and I love you use that word, awareness, it's everything. And I, I use, you know, awareness and the power of being mindful, you know, being present, because being present means I'm going to ask questions when something weird comes my way. When that phone call that I had no idea comes, I'm going to question it or I'm going to be like, mm, I mean, you feel it like in your gut, right? You know, we have an instinct. We have, I call it the like inner cyber. We we are. Sometimes we're so busy, we don't tap on, on it. Yes. We get distracted. And, and you're absolutely right. You get that weird tingling, like something's off. And and the easiest example to me is you don't have to be a psychologist or a psychiatrist. You know, when you're talking to somebody and there's something off with this person, you're yeah. getting a weird feeling. You, I want to say 100% of the time, you're right. Yes. It, it's, Absolutely. you know, it's the old saying, it's too good to be true. Something was telling me that this person was weird or odd and come to find out, yeah, you were 100% correct. The same thing, you, you you get a weird email. Yeah. And you brush it off, but you're getting that feeling. You need to dig a little bit deeper. If you're getting that feeling, like you say, that it's your inner cyber going up, going doo, 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 doo. warning, warning, yes, exactly. warning, warning. You got to start That's... digging in. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, think about this. If you are walking on a street, like and I, I was the other day, I I was walking and I'm you know, when you have this uncomfortable, like something like I, I'm not even seeing it, but I can feel like I'm not in the right place walking like this isn't. And it was it was me. I was new in, in a new city and I went out of my hotel. I wanted to find a restaurant, but there was something like my body was like, Woo! and I could feel and I found a restaurant. I went in and 
talking to them, they were like, oh yeah, there are, you know, there have been, you know, a series of events and people have been mugged and a lot of crime around this neighborhood. Be careful, just take an Uber. And, and I was like, oh my God, my sensors were so right. Like I was sensing that something is not right. And I took the action immediately to, you know, go and, and, and find a place where I could feel safer and then, you know, find, find, find a way to get home or to get back to the hotel. But how many times are we online and we don't see any of the signs, you know, we're just like, oh, you know, browsing and we see this pop and this other pop and the other and the window and this and, and we're like nothing. We don't feel it. But it's not true. We feel it. We just don't pay attention to that feeling. Absolutely. I promise you it's there. Absolutely. And, and I tell people this all the time. How you feel is more important than what you know. So you look around you physically, you think everything's fine. I see everything's okay, but I'm feeling weird. There's something off. I'm getting yes. this weird feeling. You need to act on it. You know, many, many years ago, uh, uh, and, and I remember this because nothing bad happened. But many, many years ago, I'm invited uh, by a client of mine. There, he's he's gonna he's having this year end party in Lake Powell, and he's renting a bunch of boats and and all this other stuff. He's gonna fly me down there uh, to, so we can celebrate a very successful year. And I prayed about it, and I got this weird feeling that I shouldn't go. Hmm. And so, you know, it kept coming back. Um, and so I decided I'm not going to go. And nothing bad happened. There wasn't a boat accident. There wasn't uh, anybody hurt. Uh, nothing bad happened. Where I could point and say, oh, I was, I got, you know, what a great confirmation. I, you know, I avoided this terrible thing. No. It, but I believe that if I would have gone, something would have happened to me. I was the one not supposed to go. Maybe, mm. you know, something terrible would have happened to me. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, I would have been, in, I, I don't know, but you just go with your feelings because how we feel is so, mo it's so more important than what we know. And, Absolutely. and, and again, for, uh, you know, for those who care to believe or not believe, we are spiritual be beings having a human experience, an earthly experience. And a lot of spirituality is about feelings. And yeah. again, you don't have to be a psychologist or a psychiatrist. You can pick up when somebody's lying. Even with our kids, we know maybe by yeah. their body language or by the way they're acting, something's weird, something's off. It doesn't change when you get into adulthood. Uh, let me ask you this. Look, because I, I want to move this a little bit further, but okay. So um, if, because your approach to cybersecurity is a little bit different. So when you are meeting with a client and you're setting them up, how, how do you start the program? How do you help somebody? Where do you start? Kind of walk me through your basic checklist so maybe some of our listeners can start working on their own cybersecurity. Absolutely. I love it. And I actually have a checklist for you that you can go and grab it because we can be talking here, but it's much easier if you have it on your hands or in your inbox. So you could, you know, at the end, I, I can give you definitely that link Absolutely. where you can go and get that checklist. But, you know, it's identify, and I always think about, you need to identify what matters to you. Like if we try to protect everything, if we try to protect and boil the ocean, we get overwhelmed. And when you get overwhelmed, there are two things that happen. Number one, stress <laughs> paralyzes you and then nothing gets done. Right. And number two is that, Without the action, without you lose interest, and mm. it, and and so what you want to do is you want to build yourself into a a cyber mindful mindset, and that's what I do with my clients. I think you know we all want to have 
put an antivirus, Sandra, put the firewall, put this. Da, da. And I'm just like, yeah, technology can help you. But if that was the solution, we wouldn't have any news <laughs> like we just had, you know, that's not the only, I mean, I believe in cybersecurity tools, don't get me wrong, but it isn't the only solution. So what I will say always is, okay, what are we trying to achieve? What is that really matters to you? Tell me those five things that are really, really important. And then again, ask the question, how am I, how am I doing with all those five things? It's not different um, with an example. Like if you want to lose weight, if you want to release weight, or if you want to get fit, like I don't want to say I, I want to lose it because I don't want to find the weight again. <laughs> but if you want to release that weight, right? What are you eat? Like why it matters to you? Like, okay, what's important? I, I have a wedding and I want to go to the wedding and I want to fit in the dress. It's important to me because you know, whatever reason it, now you have a reason, you you know exactly why you're doing what you're doing. So when you get that cookie, when you get that cake, when you get that ice cream, you think about that dress and you think about that event, you think about what is that really matters to you and you can choose whether to eat that cookie or not. It is not different in cybersecurity. So once you say, okay, what is most important to me, Sandra, is my customer's data. I you know, it's the most important as a business. It's my, you know, it keeps me going. It's the most important information. Then I will say, okay, if that is the case, what are you doing to protect that customer data? And the next time that you use your computer and you get an email that is weird and that is asking you to click, that is asking you to open this attachment and you don't know it. Ask yourself, if I open this, am I in alignment with protecting my customer data? Because I have all the information of my customer here, depending on obviously how big your business is. I'm talking about very small businesses to maybe a large corporation. So thinking about why, you know, what matters to you, what are you doing to protect what matters to you, and what actions are you taking that align with that that you care? I like that. Yeah, it's very simple. What's the most important thing to you? Mm -hmm. What are you doing to protect it? And, you know, I imagine, is it going to be enough? Because to your point about uh, technology, I mean, look, everybody has antivirus on their computer, but viruses still get through. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the, so so technology helps. Maybe it helps. 80% of the time, it's that 20% that you have to worry about. And, and what a, again, what a simple question. What are the top things that matter to us? Well, it could be yeah. finan our financial security, our customer security, our employee data. Those are the big three. Okay, what are we doing? What you know? Who's got access? Who we limit it? How often do we back it up? All that stuff comes into play. And I love this idea of don't look at the ocean, right? Don't, don't look at it. The hundred things that you should be, you know, that you might have to lock down. What are the top two, three, five, ten things? And let's lock, let's get those priorities. Then we can worry about all the other stuff that yeah. uh, we want to worry about. Absolutely. Like if you take one action a day, like I love this phrase. <laughs> I just love it. Um, you know, an apple a day can keep the doctor away. You, you've heard that before, right? So my phrase, my coin phrase, phrase is an action a day can keep the cyber monsters away. I love it. Yeah. And so what action? So like one password, like I'm not even asking you change all the passwords to so change one password. Think about your password as what separates a cyber monsters from your bank account. And is that the best password you can have? Uh, is that password unique? Is that password used somewhere else? Because if you use it somewhere else and what else, you know, that else gets in a data breach. And we can talk about, especially right now with MGM, because I was in Las Vegas two weeks ago. And I'm like, what am I going to do now that I know data is being out? Maybe about my credit card, maybe about my information, maybe my driver license. Like, how do I, you know, how do I preventative 
take action. So you could do that. And you could say, okay, yes, this is the best password I can do. This is, I'm, I'm going to change this password. I'm going to incorporate two-factor authentication or I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to do a few extra things and I'm going to make a password that really works for me. And maybe I will use a password manager if, if that's, you know, a, an action that I, I choose to take. But the thing is pick one and then the next day, Pick another one and another one. If you do one thing a day, at the end of the year, you'll do 365 things. That will put you in a much better place from a cybersecurity standpoint. Yeah, and what I like about that is it's not super difficult stuff. So you brought up password managers. Are you a big believer in password managers? Not in all password managers, but in the technology, definitely. Because, you know, it's like, with, if I if I need to have brain surgery, would I go to a brain surger, surgeon or do I go to, you know, trust that maybe, you know, someone that learned or, or I'll Google how to do brain surgery myself? Like, no. Like, you will trust, like, I mean, I trust a company and you have to be truthful for your passwords. But you they are only dedicated to that information. And yes, they have been breached to password managers. I heard that all the time. But the likelihood of a cybersecurity password manager company to get hacked and expose my information is so much lower than me having my passwords, repeating my passwords, putting my passwords in a piece of paper or in a note, you know, note and, and sticking it into iNotes or iCloud and thinking that nobody can access that or, or creating a password list in Excel or in anything, thinking I will protect this better. I put a password protection and the password protection is one, two, three, because I don't want to forget that it's... <laughs> It's another password. So I, you know, we do this. Thing. I and I have done all of those. I mean, I'm not criticizing anyone because I try those myself. Right. And at the end of the day, what a password manager does is two things. One, it allows me to manage, to see my whole universe of passwords. And in average, you know, most people have about 100 passwords. I mean, nobody can remember. 100 right. passwords and it you know if each password is supposed to be different you you will have to remember 100 passwords so it's impossible right. so that's the one thing that a password manager is good for and the second thing is when things happen and when a cyber attack happens so like this right now with with in vegas i can go and i know exactly what password do i need to change i know where they are and I can implement so much faster that if I have to find my papers and I can remember this account and, you know, it becomes very overwhelming. So it's all about simplicity and it's all about finding ways for you to be more productive with managing your digital life. And when you do that, you reduce the stress and you enjoy more the use of technology and taking care of it. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I have been putting off getting a password protector, but or a, yeah, a password protector, but I guess it's time to get one because interestingly enough, um, you know, every now and then I will get a message from Google where your password to a specific email is on the dark web. And let me tell you, that's a pretty sp spooky, uh, weird message yeah. to get number one and number yeah. two um i you know again talking with my group uh we have a mastermind that that meets a few times a year and and i brought this up and everybody says oh yeah i get those too and i said how many of us here have changed because of that message raise your hand nobody raised their hand including me yeah and and it's like then something like MGM and Caesars happens and you go, well, I, I better do something because it's going to yeah. happen. We're going to get hacked. Uh, you know, it's just like um, sooner or later, your computer is going to crash. It's not if, 
but it's when. Sooner or later, somebody's going to try to attack you. It's yep. not if, but it's when. And the bigger you are, uh, the bigger your brand name, the bigger celebrity you are, the bigger speaker you are, the bigger whatever you are, the more attention you bring. And with today's cyber world, with everybody saying, you know, I'm on social media, look at me, look at me. You know, if you're a big enough fish, yeah, they're going to look at you. And if all of a sudden you have, let's say, 100,000 subscribers or a hundred, or maybe 500,000 or a million subscribers on your Instagram or your Facebook or whatever, your TikTok, and somebody grabs that information, they can do a lot of damage in a short amount of time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, the, there there is also, you know, the, the social responsibility. Like you have a hundred thousand people, a million people, like some of them could get hacked as a result of you being hacked. Mm -hmm. So even, even, even from that perspective, like it's your responsibility to secure your information. So others don't get hacked. I, I, I know, um, many cases where, you know, you get a lot of bots or a lot of fake accounts. And sometimes people say, ah, yeah, I get all, all of them. I reply to the bots, like to the fake comments and I engage with them. But um, sometimes when we do that, it becomes more dangerous for the real people that you have in your accounts, for the real people that are following you. So it's a disservice sometimes not to take care. It's like, you know, I, I don't like flies, you know, flies. And every time there is a fly in my home, my husband has to go and take it out. And I, it's like a 911. When I say 911, there is a fly and he has to like immediately take care of it. So I had a, a, a trauma as a, as a kid. <laughs> but so I will take that fly out of my home because I don't want to be touching my food. I don't want to be in my water. I don't want to be like, in, like, but it's easy to take one fly out. Like if I don't care of that, I don't care. And then another one comes and another one comes and another and another and another. Like, I mean, imagine a house full of flies, like who would want to be like that? Right. So it's the same for your social media. Like if you get some weird, random message, block that and then like once a week or once a month just go and audit your your social media accounts and kick out the things that you know aren't real like you you get messages of people trying to, you know to to offer your your audience to click on things like when you see those block them report them because that's the way, like, you have to take those flies out of your accounts. Like, you know, that it's it's our responsibility, especially if, if you have a, a, a social presence. Yeah, you know what? I, I've not even thought about that, but that's such a valid point that your lack of security could affect your friends, your families, your customers. Uh, and it doesn't even have to be that they breached your business. They could just breach your personal uh, social media accounts. They could have breached your your email, and all of a sudden, you know, it's going to cause all sorts of problems. Sandra, we're almost out of time, but I wanted to get your I wanted to have you leave us with one or two words of advice for somebody to take action today. What would be the one? piece of advice or the two pieces of advice that you would give somebody listening today? Yeah. Um, two words of advice. And I will say three words of advice if that's okay. And it's be intentional with how you use and when you use technology, be aware of what's going on around you, whether you are online or offline and lastly, be mindful when you make a decision, when you answer the phone call, when you click on that link or decide not to click on that link. So be mindful. So I call this the B I am. Be intentional, be aware, be mindful. And put a stick in your computer or, or your credit card, B I am. And just remember, intentional, aware, and mindful can make a huge difference for you not to be that next victim.
I love it. I love it. Sandra, thank you so much. Looking forward to talking, talking to you real soon. Absolutely. And remember, the checklist is at cyber.sandraestock.com slash checklist. But we're going to have a link and you don't have yes. to remember. <laughs> thank <laughs> you yes. so much. Yes, uh, I will put the link in the show notes and people can go there and get the checklist. Thank you for reminding us about that. Sandra, we'll talk to you later. Absolutely. Thank you.